everybody, welcome to another episode yet of Fab's Music Cafe. Uh, for all of you that were asking me about, hey, can we hear something different than rock and blues and all of that? I have a great, great treat. A uh, dear friend of mine that is one of the most amazing piano players that I've ever seen and heard, ever. Um, calling jazz is very, I guess, restrictive because this list of collaboration goes from progressive, I mean, it's a member of uh, Simon Phillips' uh, protocol, but in past, he collaborated with people like Gino Vanelli and Jan Anderson from, uh, uh, from Yes. I mean, his background in Latin music goes from Tito Fuentes to Arturo Sandoval, Grammy nominated. I mean, uh, I can be talking for hours, but he's here, he's waiting for us, so I don't want to keep him waiting. Uh, guys, let me introduce you to my dear friend, Otmaro Ruiz. Otmaro, how you doing, man? Hey, man. How are you? <laughs> well, this is, like, <laughs> this is great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for welcoming me into the 21st century. <laughs> I'm catching up with technology now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I guess that's what uh, we all do in these days. Uh, again, uh, for all of you out there, it's just not that I'm trying to pick old friends and musicians from California. Uh, Otmaro is actually lives not too far away from me as well. I mean, as you saw, we just, you know, we talked to Chris with the UK and, and a bunch of other guys. It's just that uh, for some reason, it, it's very, very tragic in one way what's going on out there that forces us, even though Asmar and I are very, very good friends uh, and we often get together beside music stuff, it just, we cannot even do that. You know, I could be walking yeah. to a place and I can't. We yeah, exactly, I could have family. just walked to your place and do it together, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, it would have been simpler, but I guess that's, that's what we have to do. Well, luckily enough, luckily for Otmar at least, he has a beautiful recording studio that you can see, you know, that's where he's at and that's in his house. So, I mean, I'm sure that at least it doesn't get bored in these days and it's just coming up with a lot of, uh, a lot of music. So what, uh, what's going on? And I know that you had, uh, you guys had, you know, with Simon and also yourself had a lot of work and touring and other engagements that were going on. So what happened? I mean, how, how do you dealing with that? With the fact that now you have to be stuck at home for God knows how long. <laughs> well, like, like everybody, you know, it's, uh, it makes you uh, reshuffle a little bit the deck inside of your head, you know, because basically our, our life is performing. Uh, uh, at least my life in the last few years has been, uh, has been performing. Um, for the longest part, I made a very uh, a local life here in Los Angeles because, uh, you know, I had my daughter and I wanted to be a good daddy, be present. And then I took a, a teaching gig at a university, a couple of universities, and I was the local guy. But then after that, you know, you know, Maya is already in her 20s. So the last few years, I started going back to performing, and it's been only that. And... Uh, I remember our last uh, date with uh, with Simon with uh, with Protocol was in January. We finished a long tour. It was a very long tour. Thanks God, because it like, <laughs> allowed everybody to have some reserves, you know. Uh, but uh, and then our next date was gonna be in end of March. That's when we were gonna start a new cycle. And uh, so everybody said, well, you know, we have from early January to the end of March. That's three months. Let's stretch this, you know, let's, ma let's make these funds, like, be able to, you know, to provide for three months. And just when it's about to, <laughs> you know, that's when this whole thing happens. And it makes you, makes you reshuffle the whole, the whole situation in your head. You go like, what's going on now? What? You know? So. Uh, basically, uh, uh, this is a, an open canvas. I, the way I view it is, is an open canvas for everybody, and I've leveled. Basically, everybody is like <laughs> it's like an equalizer, you right? Everybody's like okay, kind of like from square square one, and it's. Uh, some people are more tech savvy than others are not, so I'm really. What I'm doing in the last, in these last three weeks, for instance, uh, I, I, first of all, I want to keep my head occupied. I want to, 
I don't want to lose it, you know, because when you are always traveling and then you are all of a sudden in your house, you know, you have to keep those creative juices flowing, right? So I started um, writing, I started practicing more and writing, 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 all kinds of stuff. I, I mean, those are compositions that, you know, I mean, we, we don't know if they will ever see the light, but you keep them coming, you know? And um, I started uh, trying to learn more about how to uh, operate my own studio without my guy, <laughs> without <laughs> my engineer. You know, it sounds like a silly thing, but it's like a lot of people have studios and they don't know how to use them because there's always a guy that helps you. Mm -hmm. So it's not that I don't know how to use it. I, I, it takes me forever. I don't know the commands. I don't, have, I don't know the shortcuts. It's, it's just like good time to to polish on those skills, you know, Pro Tools, uh, trying to learn a little bit about, about basic video editing. So, you know, uh, uh, posting these few little things that I'm doing, you know, and, and trying to keep somehow a presence until we figure out what's gonna <laughs> be the, yeah, the right, the, the, the master plan, you know? That's good. Okay, so let me, you know, for, for the few of home, uh, probably the people that follow more of me on my world that are maybe not necessarily familiar with your incredible body of work. Uh, let's get into a little bit more of uh, the Marie story. Uh, uh, you were born in Venezuela, in Caracas, right? And uh, the, the, the funny thing, guys, about this guy, that is in, I mean, again, one of the most amazing musicians that I know. Uh, both of his parents are doctors, okay? And he started, I mean, he went to university as a biologist, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, I, how did you get all of that to turn into a, a passion, you know, to turn a passion into pretty much your work and your livelihood that it's been this for the last, you know, 30, 30 something years? How do you went from medicine and medical and science <laughs> into music, you know? <laughs> well, uh... Well, the, the truth is that, you know, well, our system of education in Venezuela is very similar to the, uh, actually it's borrowed directly from the European system, you know? So when you want to be a musician, you enroll the conservatory at a very early age. Mm -hmm. You know, I was seven or eight years old when I started studying music. So but it's like really serious, you know, it's like a big filter, you know, and a lot of the kids just, you know, quit within the first two years because it's very boring, you know, especially the, cons the old conservatory system is like very repetitive and very, you know, dogmatic. And so I was already music all my life and, and it was my choice. I asked my father that I wanted to be a musician, I wanted to be a guitar player. So that's what I studied. I studied a whole career, uh, nine years of, as a classical guitar player. And, uh, but since my f parents were doctors, I also had the passion for science, you know, and then I wanted to, I wanted to also, I love biology. I truly love it. And uh, I wanted to truly do everything. And uh, <laughs> the, the high cost of that, as you might imagine, was, no girlfriends for a long time. <laughs> no girlfriends, no social life. I was the, the epitome of the nerd, you know, the nerdy kid. Yeah, but that would have given you a lot of time to practice, I guess, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was like, my life, my, you know, truly, my life was, I used to go from, you know, from my school or my high school to the conservatory every day. Every day, you know, different classes, you know, theory, history, my instrument. And uh, and then after I finished my high school, then I used to go to university in the morning, uh, like 7 a.m. I had to go to the university and uh, I was already working during the nighttime in a jazz club. So I was doing biology until around three, then going to a few classes in the conservatory, then playing at night. Well, Nice. until two three in the morning so i i would <laughs> my my 
friends from the from biology class hated me because I used to go and I would take the last desk in the room and I would just sleep <laughs> during the whole first class. I mean, from seven till nine a.m. I was like non-existent in that in that classroom. So I tried. I tried. I really love biology and science and. When I started getting assignments going out of town and going to, you know, let's go and take some water samples here, a little bacterial. It's like, oh man, you know, it's like it took me away from my other things that I liked and I had to make the decision. And then I realized that I wanted to be a musician full time and I changed a switch to piano. Uh, I wanted to be a popular musician. I started working more. Um, in in tours so it's like for a 17 years old kid you know uh already traveling it doesn't get any better than that you know oh, wow. you start getting money and doing what you like so that's it <laughs> got it well uh you know like that was uh that was a nice beginning i guess it just gave you like a, a taste actually the taste that then never goes away for the majority of the musicians well so if that was your beginning uh I know, I mean, once you came to the United States, you then, you started, you, you started, you, your collaborations obviously with uh, world-renowned musician, uh, you know, started to really, really make a, a you know, a dent uh, on, on the overall uh, jazz world and piano world. Now, uh, you played with a lot of great uh, Latin artists, like we are mentioning before, like Arturo Sandoval and Tito Puente and everything, but you also play with some and I wouldn't call him necessarily jazz, but more like uh, maybe jazz avant-garde, like people like uh, John McLaughlin, or even now, you know, most recently with Frank Gambale. But then you also have guys like Stevie Winwood. Okay, so I know of a bit as a musician, so probably it's easier to jump from one thing or another, and the public out there uh, might kind of like be the one wondering, how can a guy play this and then play that? And I know for a musician, it's a little bit easier, but... Uh, if you really have to choose any of these things, I mean, not necessarily which one is the one that you like better, but what is it that really excites you in the music of uh, Latin jazz legends like uh, Arturo Sandoval or Tito Puentes and then verse uh, more avant-garde or more progressive musicians like McLaughlin or Gambale or guys like that? What's the main difference that you notice musically? And what is that actually the, the element that makes you enjoy that? That's a great question. It's, 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 I mean, it's, I've, I've been, tr I try to, you know, kind of like rationalize a little bit the, how do I get to do these things? The first thing is that I have to, I have to mention is that when you grow up in, in a country like Venezuela, that's the only preference I can give. I don't know if, how it is to grow up in, in Italy. I assume it must be very similar. But at that point, yeah, but mind of a difference, the food def difference. But other than that, I guess. Oh yeah, yeah, the food. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, um, at the, at that, that time when I was beginning, I mean, let's say, and I can I dare to say, like from the sixties all the way to the eighties, there was a very small group of musicians in, in Caracas, in Venezuela, Caracas and the main cities, but very small group. So everybody had to pretty much do all kinds of jobs, all kinds of jobs. I joke with the fact, which is like, a, I have like pictures of me, uh, like wearing uh, like spandex, <laughs> rock and roll and a bandana. And then during the nighttime, I was wearing a suit playing jazz, you know, because we had to do all the kind, all kinds of jobs. Uh, and then when you grow up like that, you actually get a, a feel for what each style really, the little beauty in each style, you know, and you start out really liking it. So what happens is that when I arrived to the United States, I found that here, specialization is more appreci appreciated. Uh, and then, you know, uh, here I learned that when they say that, you know, you spread yourself thin when you try to do many things. That's the first time that I heard that here in the United States. 
although we have the same, almost the same saying in Spanish, but it never occurred to me that that applies to musician. Because for me, a musician should, I mean, to me, it's natural that a musician should be able to understand or to appreciate, for instance, a good classical piece or a good Latin piece or a good rock piece. I grew up listening to, I mean, I tell my, my, um, my American friends, do you know Premiata Forneria Marconi? And, and they have no idea what that is. Or neutrals. No idea. I mean, so it's like, wow, this, that's guys, progressive. Sorry for guys, out there, if you guys are not familiar, he's mentioning some progressive rock Italian bands from the late 60s, okay? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Those rock bands. I mean, so Genesis, uh, uh, Emerson, like, and Palmer, and, and Gentle Giant, but I mean, all that. And then, you know, there's no way to escape from playing Latin music because every day when you <laughs> jump in, an, in, 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 a, in the public transportation in, in Venezuela, the driver has his salsa CDs like at full blast. So there's no way not to get influenced by all this. So here in the United States, I had to come to terms with the fact that, oh, here you're supposed to be more specialized. And how, I mean, the only way that I could really channel all my baggage all that baggage is through fusion the word the, that dirty word fusion mm -hmm. which in my book fusion is fusion it, it embarks much more than what people want to make it sound mm -hmm. like if you talk fusion just fusion is always this narrow for me fusion is everything from john mclaughlin to you know, Spyro Gyra to King you know, Crimson. To <laughs> yeah, you know. So whatever in, involves the merging of cultural elements and improvisation, and this and that, that, that's already fusion. So that's how I've tried to navigate these waters. So the way, uh, the way I, 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 you know, I've done gigs. For instance, I did, I did a, a tour with Robbie Robertson mm -hmm. when, when he released an album called The Red Road, uh, uh, so The Red Road Ensemble or something like that. Uh, it was based on his, you know, uh, Indian, native Indian experience. Um, and I did that tour and people would bet that I would get bored. Why? Because, you know, they see me playing with Arturo Sandoval, which is like really, a different kind of aesthetics, more virtuoso oriented. And then Robbie Robertson is the opposite. It's a vibe, it's a vibe. And then not only I was playing a lot less notes, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I had to really learn how to, for the first time, I had to map an entire show in a controller, in a MIDI controller and have all those sounds ready to, to be triggered and all the layers and all the splits. I had never done that. So that was my learning experience. And I embraced it for, I mean, it's like, this is great. They're paying me for me to learn how to do this, basically. That's cool. So that's, that's how I, pro, I approach every gig. I mean, sometimes, and, my friends tell me that I'm sometimes too self-critical. I get calls to do jobs that I, I don't feel like I'm the right guy to do those jobs. And, I, and then I realize that some other guy takes it and the guy did a job like this worse than, than what I would have done. But hey, I prefer to be okay with my, you know, have the conviction that I, you know, I don't, I don't think I was the right guy. Uh, but if I see that I can do it and that I can learn from it, I'll take it. And if it is done with honesty, even much more so. Well, so that's, that's, that's great. And actually, um, I want to go back one second to what you just described, because uh, what you were mentioning about uh, uh, coming from Venezuela and well, you guys out there, you have to understand something that, you know, uh, the old center and South America, uh, musical culture is very, very important. There are some countries, uh, like Venezuela, for example, where 
the teaching of music is incredibly enhanced. And it's not just like what you might think that you hear on a Spanish radio. It's just like what Totomaro is saying. Uh, there is a lot of different elements and they're thought very, 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 very thoroughly. Uh, some of the most amazing musicians that I know are from Venezuela. And their knowledge of the overall thing is just quite astonishing. Now, in view of what you just said, I'm kind of like, uh, not reminding, but dealing with the fact that I had this uh, somehow double cast or double uh, point of view on the fact that it's better if you be more like of a polyedric type of instrument a musician that you know all these different things and you know how to juggle with it while being really specialized on something. Uh, again, and it's funny because based upon who you talk to, they will give you their answer. Uh, yeah. Like what you just said, uh, that uh, obviously you grew up playing all this and there was just a few musicians. No, it was not like uh, Los Angeles all of a sudden where no. 20,000 people playing guitar, 30,000 people play drums, and you know, you just you know, get even confused about it. I mean, well, I remember having this conversation with uh, Steve Lukather, and Luke was telling me at the beginning when he started, again, too, 17, 16, 17 years old, those were the heydays of the recording industry in Los Angeles. And he started to do sessions, you know, thanks to the, you know, some of his older friends, the Porcaro brothers, and then, you know, with Michael Landa or some of these other cats, that actually the fact of like learning other styles was not even a question. Like that was just music. It was not like, uh, yeah. oh, let me learn to play some salsa or let me learn how to play some Beatles or let me learn how to play some, you know, Mozambique or something like that. No, that was just like, dude, there is like all these artists that they need to record. Exactly. exactly. This is the job. You need, you need to play a guitar. And well, it's up to you to maybe to listen to some stuff and to make your own way. Now, there is a lot of people that are really, really serious about it. And then there's a lot of other cats that kind of like somehow they can fake their way through it. And they ended up in creating their own sound. Um, and I remember Steve was telling me, she's like, listen, uh, for me, the most important thing, it was just like actually being able to be exposed one day to Bob Skaggs and the second day to Barbara Streisand that gave me the vocabulary that I have today. So that's why when then you go see a guy like that playing is a type of rock music, whether it's with Toto or alone. And he says, oh my God, the musician is incredible. How, where does he get those notes? Well, you know where he gets those notes? He gets those notes because he was not only listening to Jimi Hendrix, but exactly. he was listening to John exactly. And actually somebody like Luca comes from Coltrane and, and he's listening to other instruments. So I personally, I mean, I'm probably the last one that should talk about it because I'm a self-taught musician. Uh, I didn't get like a traditional uh, education and all of that. But I always find it very um, inspiring. The fact that you can know about music, not necessarily know like how to read and all of that, but know like what you're talking about in terms of like a style, uh, a, a culture type of sound um, and experience and musicians and the creation of all these musicians. Because I think if you're able, even if you do not know necessarily how to play all of that, but you're open to listen, you do not know where the next inspiration is coming from. Exactly. And, and actually, you can create your own monster and do your own, you know, create your own stuff. Like, I noticed, like, in uh, some of your recordings where, uh, you know, like, again, because of your last name, because of your heritage, and because of all of these artists that you work with, somebody will think, oh, okay, I'm not Mother Ruiz record. must be Latin jazz, right? Well, not really, to be honest with you. I was like, I mean, I remember some of the early stuff that I heard you play where you were doing your own takey, your own takes on Richie Sakamoto's music, which was completely like a different trip. And then you go with your own band where it's like, uh, just sure, there is some Latin element, but it was more like, uh, uh, I cannot really exp I cannot really say sounds like this or sounds like that. It got <laughs> your own sound, which is actually fantastic because then you ended up in uh, bringing your own uh, history and your own knowledge to the stuff that you're doing with your wife, La Dobe, for which you ended up mm -hmm. in, become, in getting, you know, a Grammy nomination. And that's just like, a, you know, Brazilian jazz, not even like generic Latin, and actually even more, not generic Brazilian where you put in some music here and there, but just with some specific sounds and style from each specific region of Brazil, which is like quite challenging. I think that to me uh, makes you know, music interesting. Whether you kind of like the final goal or the final dress is jazz or it's blues or it's rock, it's just like the sticking to it, sure. I mean, and I understand if somebody gets specialized, 
And like BB King was specialized in blues. And who's gonna come who's gonna complain about that? You got this. <laughs> yeah, guy. yeah. But then again, like we were mentioning, you have other cats that thanks to the fact that they were playing everything, because that's what they needed to do, they were able to develop a language that it's like yeah. You know, almost well, like an Esperanto kind of experiment. So yeah, but you well, you, you just nailed it. But the way I I I I try try to make sense out of out of that is like there's two kinds of versatility. You know, uh, there's the the natural affinity for all things. When you when your brain is really open to to as a you know as a canvas like say, man let me grab this let me check this out let me check this out let me check this out that's that you, you start developing an actual taste for what everything the beauty in all in all things right that's the one kind of versatility and there's the the other kind of versatility where it's a, a rational decision a business decision oh i'm gonna learn latin music because if i learn latin music I'm gonna work with this and I'm gonna work more and I'm gonna learn these licks, these blues licks, because maybe I can get a, a, that's another kind of thing that, you know, I don't know which one, which one I would recommend. I mean, from what angle, you know? Uh, and in between, but I am more like the first one. I truly, you know, uh, uh, I truly was exposed to all this and, and, and uh, for instance, when I'm doing a, a, a tour with Simon, I'm doing like, we're doing, well, when, I, when we were, when, when, when there were gigs, <laughs> uh, we were doing all this like weeks and weeks and weeks, like two, three months out of home, playing like one single style, but because Simon's music is very strong in one. And then, uh, the one thing that I don't do, which is one of my pet tips, is that when I'm on stage, even when I'm on sound in, uh, on a sound check, I'm not desperate to show everybody the other stuff that I wish I would be, I would be playing. <laughs> you know, that, that's one of my, the, you know, I, I see cats that are like doing a rock, you know, they're with the artists on stage and they start playing like, so they're desperate to play something else. It's like, I'll, I will never do that, you know? But I'll do, I'll think about that in my room. Mm -hmm. I go back to my room and I listen to the other music that, that I want to develop or the other stuff. And then when I come back home, I practice other stuff, you know? Even in my own, in my own collaborations, I cannot stick with, you know, I do like an acoustic album. And then, you know, maybe the next one is gonna be something like more like electric. And maybe, maybe the next one is gonna have more orchestrations. You know, I need to keep moving it, you know. Uh, if not, I mean, my nature starts like, I start getting. Um, and to address a little bit the, the, what, what you mentioned about, you know, the getting that, that famous like you know having your own sound i you know i first of all i don't claim that i know all kinds of music what i claim is that i like i would like to know all kinds of music <laughs> it's a difference and and I, I don't claim that i have my own sound either but each one is a is a is a result we are a result a result of the same basically the same elements, same influences in, my, in, in more or, or, or less degree. You know, if you, it's like an spectrometer, you know, we all kind of have, like, you can see everybody has kind of like the same frequencies, one or less, one or more. So when you play an instrument like piano and if you narrow it down to popular music, okay, now popular music is, uh, uh, or if you have an element of classical music, so, so you have all these frequencies, right? And if you are Venezuela, then, you know, it, it, it helps bringing some of those other frequencies. Frequ <laughs> other frequencies up. And then if you want improvisation, if you like improvisation, then more. So the narrow, the search, pretty much everything starts presenting this, the, the same elements. You know, it's like chances are you're going to sound, if you, if you like to play Latin music, with improvisation, chances are you're gonna sound 
a little bit like Michelle Camilo or like Gonzalo Rubalcaba or like Danilo Perez. It's just like, it has nothing to do with copying those guys. It's like the fact that historically and geographically, we come from the same place, you know? So the, the trick to me is to take these influences and chop them. You, you are a great cook, so, you know, chop them in a way that nobody can find like a big piece of carrot in the middle of the salad. So everything's so finely chopped that it's harder to, to identify. What is this? It's just like, wow, this is a very finely minced mix. So that's hopefully what makes everybody's identity. Well, I guess, and then uh, obviously guys, I invite you to check out, uh, just follow the links here uh, and the meat, uh, to check out what Otmaro cooked in, uh, in his own studio as far as uh, his performance. And that's where I invite you to uh, support the artist and support art uh, because that is something very, 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 very special. But before we're leaving, um, Otmaro to finish his uh, multitask there at the studio, I have one more question for you, which is actually what I ask everybody before we call it off the episode is that uh, in a week, two, two weeks, in a month, two months, whenever it is, and you're going to get that call. Maybe it's me calling you, says, hey, Otmaro, you know what? You just heard it. We're over. It's over. You know, we can go out, you know, go up, you know, <laughs> this thing is all, we're open. Have you thought what it would be the first thing that you're going to do after that phone call? <laughs> the first thing is, what am I going to wear? <laughs> <laughs> Will I have to leave my pajamas? Oh, man. No, no. Um, gee, I mean... The first thing that I want to do is, believe it or not, go and hug my daughter, <laughs> whom I miss so much. And uh, but then again, just start, start getting, making music again with, with people. You know, really? that's something that we took for granted especially people that we, we have our home studios, we can get caught in the, in the process of working in isolation. That's why uh, it, this hasn't been that hard for me because for the most part, when you have a studio, you work in isolation. Uh, and uh, it's making me appreciate every little gig where you actually have interaction and interplaying with real musicians. So whatever that first gig will be, I'm going to embrace it like it's the best gig in the world. And I'm sure that you're going to play the shit out of it as you normally do. Well, thank you again for, you know, keeping us company and just entertain a little bit of uh, these uh, crazy afternoons on, uh, you know, at House of Rest, like the rest of the world. And thank you, for reason. Thank you guys for watching us again. Uh, please remember following us uh, on Instagram on Facebook, uh, so you can check out the listing of all the upcoming guests. Please uh, support uh, the performances, in this case, of Maro, and um, you know, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Fabs Music Cafe, and I guess uh, we'll see you soon with some other great guests from their living room or their home recording studio, or maybe from some other rooms in the house. And I guess that's all for now. Thank you, Maro. Bye, guys. See you next time. Thank Good you. Time. Thank you. Thank you.